Uh, forces. So what do we know about what happened today? Uh, well, as you say, this is the second day uh, that these have happened. Uh, we understand uh, that they, they say they were hitting targets uh, associated with the Islamic State and other terrorist groups, but many uh, analysts here in the U.S. are skeptical about that and say they've actually hit areas where those groups are not, uh, uh, are not operating. And in fact, they have been targeting uh, groups who oppose Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Uh, and that is uh, the big concern here uh, in the US. There's also been concern that the uh, Russians haven't really given much warning to the US-led coalition about their military operations in Syria and that has caused the potential for there to be some clashes. But there has been, uh, in the last hour or so, a high-level meeting between the defense officials in the US and defense officials in Russia to try to improve communications on that front. All right, we've been getting reports uh, that uh, some casualties, uh, civilians uh, were um, had yesterday in particular. Is this something that's becoming a, a grave concern? Absolutely, yeah, and we understand that today's strikes have caused casualties as well. Uh, w there are reports that more than 30 civilians have been killed, and around five of them could have been children. These are reports from opposition groups. We haven't got them fully verified, but that is certainly a major concern. Uh, the Russians have denied this entirely and said that they have only been striking uh, terrorists, um, but those are uh, reports that we've been getting back from the ground. So again, conflicting views of what is going on. It's very hard to get a, a clear, precise, uh, pre precise report from what's happened because each side has got a different version of events. What are opposition groups saying on the ground? There's a sense that uh, the Russians are using this um, supposed attacks on IS to help uh, the Syrian president defeat his own enemies within Syria. Absolutely, that is the, the big concern and we have had reports again from um, those opposition groups who say they've been targeted. One of them who was in fact trained by the CIA, so this is a group that's been supported by the Americans, they say that they were attacked twice today by Russian fighter jets. So there is a huge concern on the ground in Syria but also here in Washington that the actions by Russia are not aimed necessarily at fighting terrorists, fighting the Islamic State, but in fact they're aimed purely at trying to help President Assad by uh, attacking his opponents uh, and trying to strengthen him. And of course the US say they welcome help in fighting Islamic State, but they absolutely do not believe that um, President Assad should be supported. They say the future of Syria is only, um, should only be without Assad in charge and they do not believe that by strengthening him it will do the country any good whatsoever. As you said, the US have been uh, complaining that they haven't really been given too much detail in terms of what the Russians are trying to do. Uh, I believe they have more than 50 planes in there. Do we know how long this operation is going to last for and uh, exactly what the uh, outcome, intended outcome is supposed to be? Um, I, I think that is a million dollar question. No, I, I don't think, uh, certainly the Americans are saying on the front of it that they are not surprised by this. They knew there was a Russian military buildup in Syria and therefore the fact they've started to use that, those weapons is not a huge surprise. However, clearly, the, the very fact that the, the Russians gave them only an hour's notice before they began bombing yesterday shows just how little um, collaboration there is there. The Secretary of Defense here in the US yesterday describing that hour's notice from the Russians as highly unprofessional. He was clearly very unhappy about it. And I think that's why we've had this very quickly scheduled uh, video conference between the US and Russian military to try to sort of um, increased communication between them. Having said that, um, that, that meeting was announced last night by um, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov and, and US Secretary of State John Kerry. That was announced last night. Before it had even had a chance to take place, the Russians had already started airstrikes again 
today. So there seems to be a difference between what uh, they may be saying in public and actually when the, the action they're actually taking. And I think the US are concerned that they're never quite sure uh, what they're going to do next. And I would imagine that uh, the diplomats must be quite busy at the moment. This is, uh, I guess, a low in terms of uh, Russian-US relations since the Cold War. Absolutely. There have been, I, I think I've actually lost count of how many meetings there have been, uh, di diplomatic meetings between uh, the US and Russia this week. Uh, both John Kerry, US Secretary of State, Sergei Lavrov, Russian Foreign Minister, are in New York at the moment at the United Nations General Assembly. So that means they have had uh, face time, if you like, and been able to see each other in person regularly. And then, of course, at the beginning of the week, you had uh, US President Barack Obama and Russian President Vladimir Putin meeting face to face for the first time in a very long time that's a very rare meeting uh, but even that at that high level uh, a meeting that both sides said was constructive uh, yet the day after Russia begins these airstrikes only giving the US an hour's notice so as you say a lot of diplomacy uh, on the face of it but actually how much um, credence how much Russia is actually adhering to whatever is being discussed is hard to tell. All right, and that's where we're going to leave it. So Kate Fisher talking to us live from Washington, D.C., giving us an update on the situation in Syria.